with the National. They're from here. I'm his brother and I'm supposed to go on their tour bus. This is one of the most talked about bands on the planet. I think I'm going to get together with them. I'm going to be making this rock doc. I do have a brother, but he's more of a metalhead. I think he thinks indie rock's pretentious bullshit. Don't film me. Put the camera down. Matt. Am I fired or what? I got you some pretty good stuff. That's not your job description. Have you checked your job description? I feel like the only reason why he thinks I'm on tour is because I'm your brother. The only reason that you are here is because you're my brother. I feel like I'm on the outside of this world looking in. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Having Matt as my older brother sucks because he's a rock star and I am not. And it has always been that way. We are now recording, Kay Hanley. Oh my God, Greg Barron, I'm sorry, I'm like texting a pet sitter. No, 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 pet, while, we're starting, sitter. That's all right. while we're That's starting okay. our podcast. I'm That's not, right. did you set your timer? I'm just setting it right now. Okay. So I mean, really, we probably should have started seconds from now, but we're letting people in on it. I feel like. Yeah, this is, this is like, this is an intimate moment. It's a document. Yeah. This is what a documentary is. Of our this friendship. Is a, this is a documentary of our friendship. The, it absolutely the comfort is. and ease with which we we conduct ourselves together in a room. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And this is how I have all my friendships now. I have no other friendships. Uh, Except for the ones that you share ones on I a have microphone. As podcasts. Right. Yes, <laughs> podcasts, all my friendships. <laughs> God, I wish that wasn't true, but it is. Anyway, <laughs> I still, <laughs> I have this set for three minutes. Why do you think that is? Let's go ahead. I don't know, because you're hoping that we can get all of this in in yeah, three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. All right, I finished texting my uh, the potential pet sitter. Okay. So, um... And I'm going to, let's see, how do I, where's that, this one, there it is. I love how I'm living in, how my life is now that I get a hold of my, that I get pet sitter and house sitter recommendations from my ex-husband and his girlfriend. Like that's just. That's incredibly civil and not the so story funny. you hear, at least you don't in Los hear Angeles, it very you often. do not hear people no, that's not what they share. No. Which is which is really admirable and we don't have to go into it, but because I'm because I am close with both of you and I adore you both, that makes me super happy. Yeah. That Ugh. makes me super happy. Cuz I can't imagine it's tough. Dodged a and bullet there, man. Fuck, I did, right? Yeah. We can talk that'll be another podcast. We'll have another podcast. Absolutely yeah. about that. Well, we we and we will ha we should have Michael on. Oh, we have to have Michael we have on. To have he's him on. so knowledgeable. Oh my God, he's yeah. And, and he, he should be like one of our bebop, you know. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's find what he would. Let's find what he wants to a talk documentary about. about you know jazz from the forties. Yes. Yes. You know, totally. He'll be our guy. He'll be. He'll be. Is the thing about Mike is he? He doesn't have. He doesn't have any opinions. Or he has. He has all of the opinions. He right. Has all of the opinions. Yes, he does. And he, but he 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 is entitled to those opinions because he knows everything. My working he really relationship does. with he, him has always gone like this. I will call, I will call him and I will say, I feel like the bass is too loud, and he'll say, Nope, it's not. It's perfect. And I'll be like, Okay, man, fair enough. All right, it's perfect. And then like a half hour later, he'll send me one where the bass is lower, and go, <laughs> it, I checked it out, and, and maybe you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> but and that'll be it. And there won't be you know what I mean. And then or sometimes that doesn't happen, but almost every time. He'll reject the idea straight up. I mean, only in this situation, in the in the right. music situation, which, to be fair, uh, I don't know what I'm saying most of the time. Uh, <laughs> it's a scronky sounding. It's got like a tinny scronky. thing. Scronky. Yeah, it's got like too many. Uh, click, That's you know. technical. It's scronky. It's like scronky. Uh, yeah. I know just what you mean when you say right? that. Right. Yeah. More me, yeah. I think, is what I'm trying to get at. If you just bring me, I didn't play on that one. Okay, fair enough. Hey, in case you're wondering who these babbling idiots are, right. I'm Kay Hanley. I'm Greg Barrett. And, and you're listening to Rock Out with Your Doc Out, the only podcast specifically about rock documentaries that I can that I know of. That yeah, and so and that I think really right. <laughs> it's the only one, and it's the only one that matters. <laughs> I remember it's once called. I saw Scott Weiland. I saw the Stone Temple Pilots do like a like a. Um, like a pre-record release thing at the Dragonfly, and uh, Scott Weiland was wearing an outfit. <clears throat> is it? Is it um, uh, um, it's like the Stone Temple Pilots' third record or fourth record, and he was wearing like he was wearing everything that you could be. Like he had on a skull cap, but also a tank top and an overcoat, and then like high forties pants. Like he had every possible very like lot of makeup look. on. He had a lot on. He had a lot of different identities on. But my favorite quote of the night was he said. Uh, we may not be the best rock band in the world, but we're the only rock band in the world. <laughs> That's 
bitch. I was like, then the math doesn't work. That math does not work. But you know, and how did you? How is that possible? If there's for no some competition, reason, it totally works. <laughs> Look, I was the only one that got stopped. Everybody else just yelled, "Yeah!" <laughs> but uh, it was, and, and it's still haunting you. You're still trying to figure it I'm out. I'm like, why would you? If you're later. the only one, then you would, by default, be the best. And also, there you'd have no but one to I compare it to. I think he's saying that "only" is like a superlative. Oh man. See, like, and then you come it, in with it's the words better than best. It's, <laughs> it's only. It's like there are once you've seen us, there are no other bands. Fuck that <laughs> is so. It's so true, and that's mostly because you borrowed from every other band, and you're also really like I hate those Stone Temple. <laughs> it's so good. They got I, that's a band that needs to be documented. Maybe it's too late now. Well, because the post mortem ones are dead. Yeah, and also. You know, after I said that, I had to think for a second, like, shit, is he dead? He is dead. Yes, he's dead. He, yeah. And the guy that replaced him is also dead. What? Who yeah. replaced him? Chester Bennington. What the? Chester Bennington was in the Stone Temple Pilots you for like two years. You have got to be kidding me. No. Wow. Yeah. That's awful. And quite honestly, he nailed those songs. Like, I saw a couple of... Ch- I, yeah, you I, will never hear me shit on those guys. I am a fan that's, of both. Here's here's why. Here's what's interesting about that. And you're a song. You are a respected songwriter. Um, most I'm the people, only songwriter. You're the only songwriter. I yeah. mean, you may a, you may not be a very good. Songwriter, I'm not just you're respected. The, <laughs> you're the only. But I'm one. the only. One. That's right. They. Um, <laughs> um, 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 everybody uh, I know that's a good songwriter thinks they're good. The Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah, yeah. People, I think... I am going to say something really controversial. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready for it. I feel like Stone Temple Pilots have withstood the ravages of time better than Nirvana. I feel like when... uh, I'm not saying that they're a better band. Right. What I'm saying is is when they come on the radio, I will stick with the Stone Temple Pilot song. I may or may not stick with the Nirvana song on the radio. I'm going to have to agree with you. Really? It depends on the Nirvana song. Right. Um, I but, mean, if it's from Bleach, then I'll st- I'm will there. I'm sticking with it. Right. And, the, and, it, but and those are rare. anything after that, I don't know. Sometimes. Well, some, you know, maybe so not. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's also like that zeitgeisty thing of like one of them is the moment and the other one is just rock and roll. And, hmm. you know, it's like, you know. Yeah. Um, and the sounds, man. I mean, those, the sounds just like hold up. And I did not, I didn't appreciate them at the time. I thought they were total posers and I thought that, you know, I didn't like them. Right. Just, you know, I would shit on them just like everyone else would, you know. Right. Um, or at least everyone that I knew. But um, obviously they were very popular. Yes. And yeah, I didn't understand when you couldn't like all of it. There's that weird thing where you go, why can't we just like all of this? I, I have a skin yard record. Like I'm deep on the grunge stuff. Like, (laughs) right. Like I, I mean, I, I know the lineage of a lot of these bands. I was like, I, I liked green river, but I like this. I like Vaseline and I, and and the, even the songs that they stole from my friends in Red Cross, kind of like because they toured with them, and then they just wrote a song like them. And, You're and it was kidding? A, yeah, but it's a better Red Cross song. Like that's funny. It's a really strange. Um, they were a strangely great band with a very troubled lead singer. Who I mean, we can go into it too too long, but yeah. the, my wife product managed them for a while. Wow, that so must have in been early quite. Days. She was there during the this the, the it, she goes there with pre Lollapalooza and and post Lollapalooza wow. where he. Where Scott was introduced to heroin somewhere along that tour, and right, um, and then went from like the guy that used to swing by the record, you know, by the record to see how the record was doing and check in and see how everybody was and be nice to everybody, to the guy who's to being a junkie. Like I, we can't, we're not going to go in a white limo. So get us another one. Wow. And like, but the, they're going to say your Grammy now, and then by the time they got a black limo, they'd already won and missed the award. Wow. And I, like just take them straight to the tent. And Mary kept saying, it's three blocks. Like, let's walk. How punk rock would it be to walk? Uh, she's trying to sell them on the idea of the credibility of walking. Wow. But, um, yeah. Yeah. That's so th- amazing. It's wild, right? Yes. Um, well, we'll we can also uh, do uh, another podcast about dead rock stars and go through we can. all of that. We could. But today. Right. 
today today we're gonna talk okay. we're gonna talk about yeah uh the documentary that we have just watched which yes. is a documentary called mistaken for strangers and it uh is a film made by uh the new director tom berninger uh Brother of Matt Berninger, who is the lead singer of The National. The lead singer of The National. And so uh, Tom went on the road with his brother's band, ostensibly right. as a roadie, but he brought uh, a film, he brought a camera with him to film the band. Right. And uh, quickly forgot about all of his roadie duties and uh, went from being uh, roadie in his brother's band to being the worst roadie of all time who was only keeping his job because his brother was the lead singer of the band to being a uh, kind of an acclaimed filmmaker for making this movie. He also got fired. Uh, it is, it, I couldn't tell. So I didn't pay from attention. From the tour. The, yeah, okay, now let, here's something we, uh, that K.O. and I wanted to say, which is, spoiler alert, we're gonna spoil this movie if you haven't seen it because we mm -hmm. can't talk about it any other way. Most of the movies that we talk about are old anyway, and yeah. uh, if we get invited to a premiere, we'll certainly treat it uh, as, a, as a film that uh, needs to be watched and help promote it. Um, but um, the enjoyment of this podcast is to be able to come in here uh, and then later on join in and tell us what you thought uh, of the experience. And, it, and so some of the, like what I think part of the sleight of hand of this is I didn't realize he directed it because it, it wasn't, it, it looks like the conceit of the movie is they're filming the making of the documentary because I believe <laughs> that there were other cameramen around because I think they were just making, at some point in there, they are shooting a concert. Right. right? They're, short, they're shooting kind of a tour film, but n not meant to be a documentary. And yeah. And he's shooting a documentary. So there's all, it's. There are levels. Right. And the description on Amazon sort of sells it short because it said- um, Oh, it does. A slacker, it sounds it like says, a- It says that it's almost like Spinal Tap or something like yes. that. In my description, it's like, it's meta. There's right. like, it uses right. all kinds of like descriptives that I think are not really accurate. It short sells it as this epic ode and exploration of brotherhood. It is dark and Sad. I mean, I this movie fucked me up. Did it really? Fucked me up. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh! Because you, I, how? How? Tell I had me. The same relationship with my sister. Wow. Who, who passed away like a year ago? Yes. And so it oh was like, oh my god. Oh. And I was like, I didn't. You, you, Wait, who? Yeah. Was, who were you? And who was the sister? I'm the big brother who got all the love. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> so it's that it's that Greg, weird recognition oh. of. So we we'll, we can back into that, but um um, but yeah, so uh. Let's just talk about the band first. So, are you were you a fan of the National? Uh, peripherally, yeah, I'm aware of them. Uh, I didn't, you know, I I I liked some. St I didn't really care for them a great deal, but I didn't have a strong opinion about that either. Right, they're fine. I I I think that I um, categorize them as one of Amira's bands. So Amira has the much cooler, she is the, she's way more on it. She's always listened to college radio stuff. And mm. sometimes when I hear something that either feels too sincere or as I've said on this podcast before, I've done a lot more reading than me. Uh, my defense mechanism is fuck those guys. Right. And also it was, it was at one, at a glance and not investigating it. Um, I realized like, Oh, I, I think I equated it somehow with Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, which is the thing that I desperately want to love that I just don't. Yeah. There are, there are some Nick Cave songs I like and bad songs, but for the most, I can't get through a record. I'm t I just So you're oh. thinking like because of that deep voice yes. and the darkness yeah. of it that it, yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. And then I go and look on my phone and I have shazammed at least five songs of theirs. Oh, that's funny. And kind of got them confused for some reason because they're not similar to the Walkman. I don't, I just had oh. them in a, I think I had them in a 2000s, early 2000s indie rock, smart male category. Like, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what that distinction is, but they're fucking <laughs> great. Like, and now I'm, a, now I'm like, I'm probably going to become obsessed. You, I mean, th this movie did a lot to kind of kick open the door for right. me. I, my experience with the band, when Clay and I first started dating, um, he, we, he, he's on the road a lot and 
And so like the beginning of our relationship was like a lot of texting. And so we would send each other like songs that we found on Spotify and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And so that's great. And uh, and so one of the songs that he sent me was uh, I Need My Girl from The National. And that was pretty much my first positive exposure to them. And so right. obviously like I like, you know, I have that on like my falling in love mixtape of course so well, i how like great. i told so i i have a good like i have a good i started with like not necessarily being a fan but having a good feeling about them sort of like a good like sense memory yeah, of, course. of their music because yeah. of that it's like i equate that song and therefore them with kind of like that happy feeling of falling in love even though like they're really not <laughs> they're not that at all they're pretty dark super dark but, dark poetic brooding but like music because because we live in a, in a world where actually there really isn't a visual with music anymore you know you have to go then find it because when you hear music a lot of times or you're shazamming or you hear a song once then and i think for me i mean it's always been a, uh it's always been a union of church and state it has to be there has to huh. be a look that goes along with it for me to be all in I hmm. have to kind of dig, and I didn't imagine the kind of performing that yeah. they do. I yes. wasn't, nobody told me about the Did you twins. like it? Fucking loved it. I right. loved it. I thought it got, it's one of those things that starts off morose and sort of maybe Tom Waitsey or slow. And then, but at the end, it's just got cacophony and yeah. the big chairs are being broken and he's falling down. He's run, like, I was like, I had, I could not imagine this. And even though he, they're like very serious, they're not... In me, and of course, this is all through the prism now of having seen this movie. I, d I feel like they're, you know, they're a serious band. They, the, the singer, Matt, takes himself seriously. Yep. You know, he's not, he is not easily, he's not like, you know, back slapping and laughing and telling jokes and stuff like that no. backstage. No. He's like, who he is on stage is who he is backstage, but he's also, he's not, a, there's nothing aloof about him. No. And there's nothing pretentious no. about him either. He's just like a no. guy who could be your math teacher. You could easily it, see how he went from being like a math teacher five years ago to like being a rock star. Yes. He's that guy. But he also seems like the guy. So, so the, so the story is essentially, so the brother is going to go on tour with the band and mm -hmm. he's, essentially been hired to work for them in in so, sort of a uh, um, kind of a PA way like when you're a sure. production assistant like he's his job is to do what needs doing right make sure the stuff on the writers there get the towels make yeah. sure Matt shows up and make sure his brother shows up on time to things like just the I mean I don't just know you toured so I don't know you tell me like well what? this is a bigger operation than I toured in with Letters to Cleo but but people like this existed like when I was on the road with Miley like th there were many people who did right. that job description but right the now reason you, you, we will have to put pin that because you breezed over that and everybody here I went wait we were on on the road we with were, Miley yeah. so we will we right. will revisit Miley for sure we uh, will. But that'll take us a while. That'll but take a you, while. You you went on the road with her. Yes. And what did you do? I was a backup singer and I did like a lot of dancing. I had like choreography. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. It was so great. It was yeah. like the best job ever. But um, but the reason that this little brother gets kind of like taken on the road, I think is probably because <clears throat> he's not doing great at life at succeeding no. at life generally yeah he's he's an artist yeah. and he is he's just kind of a he's a what is he he's like a he a, is a tr he's like a tragic comedy so if you look he's at just he a and his brother they're they kind of look alike except he didn't get the height the he's, ch the he's chubby he's got long hair and I think he's had to choose, and this is what I noticed with my sister. Oh, he already picked tall, lean, smart rock star who wanted out of Cleveland the second he came out of the womb. Right. That guy wine glassed and suit jacket his way right out of Cleveland. You could see yeah. he was like, that's a guy, or not Cleveland, Cincinnati. Cincinnati, right. He wanted, you could tell he was a guy that wanted to Big leave brother. Cincinnati. Big brother, yeah. You know, like he looks like he sort of came from Brooklyn. Sure. Right? They were part of that. I think they were part of that Brooklyn sort of, Maybe. beginning of the Brooklyn rebirth of like this is 
or you know, or didn't really have a chance to read up on the pedigree. So no, I don't. No, they were somewhere in the lineage of but where yeah, the they strokes seem were bro- in LCD Brooklyn-y. sound system in that era. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think they were part of that kind of thing. But they came originally from Cincinnati. The really interesting thing about this is the other people in the band are also brothers. The yes. drummer and the bass player are brothers. The two guitar players are twin brothers. Yes, which is so wild. And so there they are as successful brother couples succeeding. Right. And this guy brings his brother on the road to document it. And it's, it's the beginning it's of the movie is everything. The very, that first scene. It's, well, it's so funny because he, before he even gets on the road, he goes to the local... Uh, record store in Cincinnati right, right. and is like talking to the guys in the store and he's like he he can't really cut he's a metalhead first of all yep. oh my gosh and by the way can we talk about the <laughs> he he considers himself to be like a, a a a fledgling filmmaker and so he showed clips from from his his movies uh, both both of the two movies that he showed us, one was uh, from he showed clips from both from from the dirt under his nails right. and wages of sin. Right. Both of those descriptions end with uh, not basically the person, the lead, the protagonist not getting what they want and going on a murderous rampage. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Okay, I didn't even see that. Wow, it was it, so it, great. It, oh, my God. And, and, and then he, he's a metalhead and he goes to the local record store. Yes. And tries to get these guys in the record store to like talk to him. And I think the way that he, he, he doesn't looks, even, he doesn't know how to conduct an interview. He doesn't no. understand what he's doing at the record store. He's trying to, t- and this is a, this is like a, a vinyl store. Yeah. He's trying to, te- you know, like test the waters of like, Hey, do you guys know the national? And these guys couldn't be less interested. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, and then you, they cut back like they, you clear, they clearly did some cutting and then he's like, well, that guy's my brother. And they're like, okay, oh, that's good. And then he show him standing by the counter. And so, and the, at the, at the, um, at the, nope. Okay. And also no, sorry. That's the thing with the timer on. Yep. Nope. Um, the, the very opening scene of the movie, you see the singer, they're in a park. Right. And the singer has his shoe off and he's hammering a post into the ground while the brother is trying to form a sentence. And already you're like, fuck, I'm irritated. What is this? And he's trying to interview his brother who is so, uh, trying to get this post in the ground so he can put an umbrella so that he can sit under the umbrella because he doesn't want to burn himself in the sun this interview. And then they start talking and it's it's already kind of confrontational because the brother, uh, because, uh, so Matt, uh, Matt and uh, um, Tom. Tom, Tom doesn't have a question. Right. Tom doesn't know how to interview his brother. He doesn't know what to ask. Doesn't know what to say. And he's, right. and he's fumbling for words and he is, the thing about him is that he's in, he's immensely lovable. Like that's the really tough right. part. He's like, there's, it's hard to. The little brother yeah, filming and, and, and big brother wants to, to wants, you know, Matt wants Tom to succeed. And you can see that throughout the whole thing. Like, I don't know. See, now that's where, how, that, that's where, we, I, okay, yeah, go, okay. go. I don't know how Matt did not murder his brother through this process because right. Tom Berninger, the little loser brother, making this movie was like the most, I mean, it made for such a good movie ultimately, but you can see how, I mean, the tour manager was regularly ripping his hair out. That was fascinating too. So the tour manager is a whole other thing. Brandon. And, and my art, and I will, and I will, uh, so my, um, we, I, 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 I realized that maybe we should give a thesis statement because my, my, this movie's not about the national per se. No, it's if not. If you like the national, there's lots in it. And the, the really fascinating thing about it. The soundtrack is amazing. It, it's amazing. It's perfect. The footage, it's actually directed from, like the, the final, the whole thing as a piece is perfect. It's and, great. But I, my argument is, is that his brother doesn't actually want him to succeed. Hmm. That, and there's a part and, and we can get into that in a little bit, but there's a part of it. And I think that's at the beginning where no, without the constant remind, like he is Matt's constant reminder that Matt is doing fine. 
because Matt as the lead singer of that band has self doubt and is plagued by all of the things that every other person is like, despite all of his confidence, he's an artist that hates himself and isn't sure and probably reads critics and does all that stuff. But when his brother is around, it's like, Oh fuck, what is wrong with you? And I'm trying to help you. And those are both things people say to them. Like, are you? And and are you really like, because I am a big brother. I'm a big brother. So I, you know, but right. we'll get into that a little bit later. So, okay. So we'll put a pin in that because that's the, my thesis is that this is about the, um, to me, this is about the being trapped in family. Yeah. It's a trap. You cannot, it, it is a, those are bonds. You just have to, they're hard to break. The, the way that Tom conducts himself in this movie clearly get, you know it's like it starts out as him just being kind of like a ham-fisted director and he doesn't know what he's doing and he's just shooting whatever and he gets everyone in the band to go through these humiliating exercises and like posing for the camera for like maybe b-roll like like look shocked in the mirror you know like right, and he right. and he yeah. ends up using all of that footage not just like as photography but like the exercise of getting them to do, to do right. all this stuff right but then that's what, fascinating what, it's so funny Meta. and i love the way they use that it was fant how they it was just fantastic so and even from the beginning so it, it is and i guess in some ways it is set up like like a sort of a big dumb summer comedy right mm -hmm. here is this guy who is ill-prepared to go out with a band not only that they're not even close to it, the kind of music that he likes and the star of it is the star brother who was great at everything while he was not good at anything. Right. Which is reconfirmed later Hilarity on. Hilarity ensues. Right. And at first it is kind of funny. Sure. Um, but it's serious. Like the the tour manager who, and I'm like, is that guy, again, not a world, I'm not, you know, like when you do stand up, you just, you're your tour manager mostly. Um, is that, it, is that how tour managers are? Because you see him at the beginning and this guy's already pissed. Everybody yeah. else that looks in the camera, the other band members, the tour manager, any the, the the manager manager, they all seem pissed while they're while he's you know, because he's just walking around with the camera yeah. and everyone's just like, Leave me alone. Right. Or just like anybody what, who's not in the band. Like usually when a band gets to be that size. Because yeah. they're playing like, you know, theater, like 5,000 seat theaters or whatever. And, right. you know, so that that's a bigger operation. Yeah, and the right. tour manager's responsibilities at that point are vast. They're big, right? And yeah, so right. It did seem like for he, yeah. like, you know, if you ca are counting on somebody to make sure that everything is in the dressing room, that is one thing, one thing that you don't have to worry about. But if you have to worry about that it takes up a huge chunk of real estate in your head. So the, I, so the fact that Tom cannot be counted on <clears throat> to do these very basic tasks that, you know, that the band's going to come after him and be like, where the fuck was our case of beer? Like, I know as a person in a band that if my case of beer, back when I drank cases of beer, um, literally right. by myself <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> when, you know right. if that wasn't there someone would be living in hell very right. quickly right so right. the tour manager need who, when is that because he it's is just like delegating a, it's like such a day-to-day -day operation that the little creature comforts that they're not there they kind of because yeah you know, what you don't see is oh, like the, you need to have get up things. early get on a bus go to a thing like it you yeah know, and uh, like the backstage yeah. is like like, especially in big cities, like your tour bus has to go away. Maybe you don't get to go back to your hotel. Right. So it's like your home base for the day or for the evening right. is backstage. But anyway, that's like where your snack is. That's where, sorry, my phone's ringing. Um, you know, that's just like where your home base is. And so if your shit's not there, I mean... I can't even think about it. It's like your shit is there. It's supposed to be there. And by the time you get to be that level, your stuff is there because some, because very professional people are taking care of those things. So right. I'm not surprised at all that like that Brandon, the tour manager was just like right out of the gate. Like, dude, 
you got to just do your job. You got to just do your job. Like put down the camera and focus. Yeah, right. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. One of my good friends, I, and maybe we'll get to talk to him someday. His name is Mike Dalkey. And Mike um, worked for um, John Silva's company. Mm-hmm. And he was um, <clears throat> kind of like, kind of like this guy. Kind of. He, he worked for Nirvana at the beginning. And he sort of, he had many different jobs, but at one point he became Dave's drum tech. Um, but Mike was exactly like this guy, man. He was just fucking drunk and would oh. want to talk about things and wander around. And he fell asleep next to the drum kit during the show. Oh, and Dave no. would bust one or two snares. And he's like, Dave's like just hitting this thing and there's no drum head in it. And now he's just hitting on the side and he's looking at him. Doc, he's just sound asleep. Oh no. He loses that job. He gets the job with the Pixies. Uh-huh. He goes to New York and they do Conan and he gives, um, uh, he gives, uh, uh, it's not, it's no, it's a uh, Frank black and, uh, there, and he gives a bass player an out of tune bass and, and they, you know, it's live <gasps> television and Charles Thompson, Frank black, oh. black Francis was so angry I bet. that he refused to do another take. He's like, no, we're just going to let it be like that. We're going to let that be the song. <gasps> no. Yeah. So good story great story doggy's wow. now sober and tour manages the old 97s oh well that's good but it was so i so i know this guy Without, like i know him right. he looked like Dalkey. he he looked and Dalkey was chub you know, he was heavy from beer weight and he had long stringy hair and he just wanted to and he was super smart and he wanted to talk about other stuff and like you know the pants like i but i don't know like like they loved him because he was funny he was part of the reason he mike is part of the how Nirvana got a hold of the back, the heavy metal parking lot videotape original oh, no. that then <laughs> set it into motion when they mentioned For everyone it, right, to, right. got it out into the world. And it became like a meme before a meme was a thing. Right. And Mike was just right. one of those connector guys, a guy that yeah. if you ask him, he knows every, he's the a guy who knows a guy. You know. Right. You're almost like we've been, we've been to, together. We've been in a room together. Yeah. Right. But he would lose these jobs, these great jobs that, you know, that he would get. And, uh, and so at, at the beginning he reminds me of Mike, but then it, you start to see the drunkenness and you start to, now you're kind of on Matt's side. Cause at the beginning you're like, God, the lead singer of the nationals kind of, he's super talented. Like they keep bouncing it back and forth between yeah. just like, wow, fuck what a these douche. songs. And he goes, wow, he's kind of a prick though. Yeah. And then eventually you get to the point where you were talking about where you're like, Oh, this guy's going to get fired. He's going to lose this job. Right. Right. And it was, you can see leading up to as, you know, as it's leading up to big brother, Matt kind of talking, you know, having the regular conversation with Tom about like, you can't start drinking now. It's like, once you start, you can't stop. It's like, and he kept saying, you've got the allergy, you've which the you know, allergy. is our language. You know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Right, uh, right. But, but one of the things that I thought was really interesting is that it, it also coincides with him. Like he's not so much pranking the band anymore. He's not so much like taking video shots of like people's feet Right. You know, cause he was, that was like kind of big at the beginning, just like these ridiculous pointless shots of like people's feet right. for like a whole right. verse. And he start, you see, he, they start sh- revealing like the footage of him interviewing the other band members. And instead of interviewing the band members about themselves, right. he'll interview the band members about Matt. He's trying to find out who his older brother is in the context. He's trying to make sense of his own relationship it, with his brother and trying to work it out work the whole reason it starts to seem like the whole reason for him making this documentary is just to process his relationship with his brother and i feel like his brother brought him on tour maybe for the same reason i don't maybe. know i mean we you sort of go or maybe it was a favor or like because you it was both because they and the way it's laid out they put the parents in you know, you'd think, oh, they'll put the parents in the beginning and talk about him, but they don't. They put the parents in after he gets fired. Yeah, and he goes home with and his he tail home. between his legs. So right. he gets fired. Right, and and, and right. Three they, quarters they, of the way through the movie, yes. Matt, Tom predictably gets shit canned. After, after the show in New York, he like totally stays at the bar. He gets oil spotted by the boss and they don't realize that he's not with them until they're like an hour outside of New York. What did you call it? 
he got oil spotted. What does that mean? It means you get left by the bus. It means the bus leaves without that's you. That's amazing. Oil spotted. I've never heard oil spotted. <laughs> I think that's, oh a, my God. that's a, I got that from Stacy Jones. Um, yeah. So he gets oil spotted and then they're like, what the actual fuck, right. dude? Like, how right. did you do that? He's like, I was, I was having fun. Why didn't anybody come get me? And, and Matt's just like, you're a grown man. You're a fucking man. grown ass man. You're a grown up and it's not their job. And he it, goes, yeah, but wouldn't somebody just say to me? And it's like, it's no. so, oh my God, because it's so funny because he, so he's, it, <clears throat> it's, it's not unclear that he's an alcoholic or he takes, he, he, he at least, I mean, that's a decision for him to make, but uh, he has all those tendencies and other people are saying it about him. Yes. And even his brother who may also be that other version because there are many different versions of the alcoholic mm -hmm. and it's sort of hard to say because he keeps saying, but you drink too. You, you drink, drink too. all the time. He turns right. the camera at one point right after he gets fired and goes, he drinks too. And when he's talking that it's when he's talking to the, so the, the, the twin brothers who he sort of tries to engage them in a, who's a faster guitar player thing, which is oh, super that's weird. So funny. And they both seem sort of baited. And then he says to, the, like the he's one trying to goes, pit one brother against the other. And but then at one point the one guy goes, Oh, we're gonna talk about Matt? Or we, right. Yeah, I just you're right. And that's that thing of like, No, man, what do you uh like he tries to ask him a question. But there's that also the weird <laughs> part where he asks he, he said, Tell me yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, Tell me about your process and then he goes, I'm gonna do you want a glass of wine? And then he just goes, just talk to the camera and he leaves. To go get them wine. Yes. So now the guy's conducting an interview while he knows. The, so this guy's li like. And he's like out of camera shot, like almost out of earshot saying like, I'm listening. Right. And you then know? you hear the clanking And it's like stuff. he's not interested one little bit in At what all. this guy has to say for himself. He's just like, as soon as this guy wants to talk about himself, which he should, it's a rockumentary about his band. Right. But because he's not Matt and he doesn't want to talk about Matt. Tom is no longer interested right. in talking. He just wants to get them drinks and then they can have wine or whatever. It's, I mean, there are things that happen in this movie that like, if you've scripted it, it would, it would, ah, uh, no. That's so he, a, so he goes home to mom and dad right. because that's what you do right. when you're the fuck up little brother who's right. just been kicked off big brother, you know, like, American Big Brother of the Year, right? His tour, and um, and they have kind of he has like a come to Jesus with his mom, and and the mother is just you can tell that she just has the the she just knows how to deal with her two boys so well. I, right. I have to say, like everybody, this family is so loving, and it's so fascinating, it, right? And they really just know how to deal with one another, which was such a lovely thing to see. And even like Matt's wife was so wonderful with these two brothers and like real, and it turned out at the end of, in the credits it, that Matt's wife helped Tom do the final edit of this movie. Yes, and but she that, also we'll co-writes some of the Walkmans. I mean, some of the national songs. Oh, she does? Yep. Yes. Oh, I didn't I found see that. that too. I got. I suddenly was like, oh my God, I need a week to research. I know. I feel I like I need to know more. I was fascinated with everybody, yes. I need to know more. I I just I, but she's I think painting it's, right. We go to her. We go to the play. Oh yeah, there. and mom. Right. So mom what they're, they're setting up is like Ber she Berninger. Right, and she does a. Uh, I'm, I I don't know um, the sort of the Monet thing, right? She does the sort impressionism. Of pointillism. Yeah, impre right. And so she's got all these paintings, and they're looking at the paintings, and um, and he's like, "Is that a palm tree?" And she's like, "No,", no. <laughs> like. Immediately, she's immediately she's at the same place everybody else in his life is with him, and it's so telling. It's so beautiful. It's just like, ah, oh. and so, yeah. <laughs> so he, she goes, "I want." He goes, "I want to ask you some questions," and she's like, yeah, "Okay, well, here we go." And um, and then he's bad, but he, he, the the counter to what we were just talking about with the brother, there are things he was willing to get with his own camera that like. Only hardcore news people would do where like Pelman goes, get the fuck away from here. And he just keeps his camera right there. Yep, it's like, yep. get the fuck out of here. And he's like, nope, this, like I know I'm here. Even when he got fired, the guy goes, are you sure you want to shoot this? He goes, yeah, shoot it. Okay, you're fired. Like it, yeah. so they're, and so with the mom, he like, he asks her, 
you know, basically, which who did you? Who do you like better, Mom? Yeah. 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 Who was he? And she goes, well, the Matt was much easier to raise. Yeah. Because you didn't want to do anything, and you never completed anything. Yeah, that was the thing. She, I mean, and that was, of course, foreshadowing for the end of the movie because she was like, you, you know, sometimes I would let you quit things, but a lot of times I had to just keep making you do things because that's what you do. You just quit. And that really resonated with me because, you know, for a million reasons. But right. oh but God, she was too. like really so honest with him, but like in the most... But she was being really honest and she was being really loving and kind at the same time. It was it was quite a scene. Um, yeah, it's interesting because like, you're right. It, when you look back at it structurally, everything sets something up. And so, you know, when you understand the structure of something, then you go, oh, am I being manipulated? It never doesn't feel honest. Like, it's right. like, well, but this was what happened. And there are... And it also doesn't really time frame doesn't matter because the information is still the same. Like, like mm. but it, 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 I never felt like I was being falsely manipulated or mm -hmm. oh they got this thing and they'll be able to sell this point. I'm like, this is what people think, and he's asking what people think, and maybe he knows this is his last shot. And I don't know. And he could have made everybody cartoony, you know, because right. all of their personalities were kind of like rife, right for the, for that kind of treatment, like. Yeah. Tom's personality could have, you know, he could have made himself much more of like a drunken buffoon. Matt's character could have been much more like brooding and douchey and, you know, the prototypical lead singer. The other guys in the band could have been, you know, it, it, it just all could have been so, it, it, in tr if treated with more cynical, by more a more cynical eye. Yes, but, and there's, yeah, right. But he, it just, it all of it felt just like, it felt really like humble. Like everyone is, was being portrayed exactly how they were. Right, right. Any mystique about any of them, including Matt, who was the one that wants to, has dressed the part of the guy who's complicated, is genuinely complicated, but also is from Cincinnati. Right, exactly. And his exactly. family are like comfortably from Cincinnati, but they're, but they're, I mean, first off, Cincinnati is fucking beautiful. But secondly, like they're, they seem to be smart, academic, grounded people who, you know, she paints. And then when he's talking to his father, he's in the... He's in the woodshed. He's in the woodshed. Now, obviously, yeah. they, those were, they were meant to express those things about those people, right? They also just sit in chairs, I would imagine. But, <laughs> but they were effective. And they were effective in like, you know, this is, this is a person who had other pursuits besides just being a mom. You know, sometimes when they interview mom, her only job is to say... Oh, well, when I raise them, right, as opposed to like, I do other stuff too and I always have and I'm an artist. And then she showed their artwork right. from when they were kids. Yeah. And she was like, you were always the better artist. Yeah. And she goes, I always told you that. You're the better artist, but you're in your own way. And you're she like, literally oh. said to him, you're more talented. More talented. Which would be Which is like hard a big to thing yeah. to say for yes. a mom. Right. So after that, really kind of like, I don't know if they were like, kind of like, cleansing the palate, priming the pump, whatever it is for the for the last act, the final act of the movie. But after that interaction with mom and dad, after he gets shit canned by the band and goes home with his tail between his legs, right. Matt invites Tom back to New York. Did they live in upstate or something? It was beautiful wherever they lived. But I don't know, yeah. Matt invites Tom to New York where he lives with his wife and child to finish to edit the movie, to finish making the movie. Right. And um and he goes and and has like really sweet interaction with with Matt and his wife's child and with Matt's wife and and they talk about This is the spider and the fly moment for me. Really? Yes, because his main problem is his brother. And now his brother is shepherding him in his own home. Wow. And there's this You have such a different of view of this. Yeah. Like you have a really deep view of this. Well, it just was like it really fucking hit me. I mean, that scene right, in particular, yeah. I'm like I'm like this is the wrong place for him to be. This is the thing that's fucking killing him. This is like you know, like I said, I had this with my sister. I'm like when she worked for me, which she did for a time, I'm like this is wrong. Right. This is you're bigger than me. Better like I'm like but you can't do it here. Right. I own this territory. Right. These are my haunts. These are my friends. You're this is in my, my lane. 
Right. You're in my thing and you're co-opting my friendships. Don't text my friends because it's that weird thing of like, you think I'm the pathway to your happiness and I'm just on a path. And, but also I, when I also have no better support system, like when, right, I, when, I, when right. all this, uh, the, I've had a couple months of my life where I was like, without her, I was friendless. Right. And if I, if I thought about myself, it, like if I had half of the belief in myself that my sister did, who knows where I'd be? I'd be fucking huge. Like right. I, right. I mean, she, nobody believed in me more than her, but that's not good for her or for me. Mm-hmm. Right. In a relationship, like, you're very debilitating. And, uh, and then you, you can't get out of the role of like, now I have to tell you what to do. His right. brother feels like he has to save him and kick him out of the nest at the same time, which is impossible. Right. Well, I think he feels like he needs to save him first and then he can kick him out of the nest. Right. It ends up being, I have to say, pretty successful. And the way and I'm yes. not sure what the 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 actual like real time trajectory was, but the way they edited it, and this was probably the most manipulated and stylized portion of the film was the right. last act where he's editing the movie and uh and and then they premiere it at like opening for the band at some theater yeah and everything goes ass over tea kettle it just stops and the, it just stops it, and it then matt and is stops. just like dude how could you not get there the day before make sure everything works and so no one saw the movie matt is just like throwing up his hands tom has fucked this up again and it ends up being it as a lot of failures often are like the best thing that could have happened well, because he ended up revisiting the scene okay so they but there's a scene this is the this is the part that really fucked me up this is like and i went <laughs> I, this, this, this is where whole i movie lost just it. did I a lost number it. on you yeah i just wasn't seeing it this way i just wasn't seeing my relationship with my sister this way and just them i loved them when yeah. he got fired i cried like i was like oh, oh. Ugh. But when they're sitting and it's the way that it's positioned and I even wrote some of the dialogue a lot. So, so it's after he's fucked up the movie and he's going to go back and, and work on it. And they're, it's sort of a co they're sitting outside and they're, and, uh, um, they're both having beers. Um, and, and the big brother is sitting sort of behind Tom and above him because he's there at an angle and they're on these like, you know, little outdoor chairs and, they're talking about um um oh stop oh that's our all right we're gonna hang on who's calling you in the middle of the podcast our timer <gasps> oh shoot it's our timer okay that's all right we're good all right we're good um we'll give it a couple more minutes yeah 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 um okay so they're sitting next to each other having yeah. beers they're having is this where they're both where they're sitting side, yeah, they're sitting side by side on like lawn chairs or something like that out in the backyard. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now know that also in the movie, I just that I wrote this down. One of the one of the band members that he, I think it's one of the twins, says to him, "You got to get out of this thing with your brother. You're never going to win." Well, who said that? The uh, one of the twins. I think it was the guitar player. Oh, well, they're both guitar players. Oh wow. One of the twin brothers, and I feel by the way guys and the other guys in the band whose names I don't know that I wish I did because bless your hearts you deserve it right I mean truly this just they had to focus the movie on one thing which yeah. to be fair the movie we watched last week I'm even madder at it I want to I, I know that, now that still well, I was gonna that, say I, like yeah. when you compare what the national movie to the stone roses movie and how just like sanitized the stone roses movie like as we decided eventually it was just like a promotional film for their tour or whatever like there was nothing about it there was nothing to it it was like gossamer right and this right. was like it showed it showed everybody's it it's showed a, a lot fuck. of blood and guts it's the, I, the, yes it was such a risky it move it's, it's, it's it so not, it should not have worked right it shouldn't have but uh, but it showed just enough of everything without ruining anything. And, and quite honestly, um, it made me like, again, I went from like, Oh, they're kind of good to like, I'm going to maybe buy all their records and I'm in love with them. And I'm right. like, they're going to be here soon. Like I really, are they going to be here soon? Yeah. Oh my God. We yeah. have to go. We just have to pack up all of our families and just well, go on a well, field trip. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, well, let's make plans. We should do that because we have to do that. Yes. And someday we have to interview Tom. 
we had, yes. that's got to be one of the things. And you know do. what? This was this is the podcast that we should have started filming ourselves doing it. Well, we we're still we filming. will. Yeah, we yeah. have to. We, we have um, to. So let's get to the to the guts of this. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get. Yeah. Do do you want to rate it? Well, yeah, no, yes. Let's let's rate let let's rate it, and then we'll talk about what we. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's rate it. I'm gonna give this four and a half tough nulls. Four and a half out of five tough nulls. I think I'm gonna give it five. Yeah. This is exactly what I. This is exactly what a. It's it's the be. best. It it's it by just, it's the it, best thing we've seen so and far. It, and I like. And I not just, just want, shit on the stone roses, but what a fucking opportunity wasted because yeah. you already have the music if you want to listen to it. We've said this before. And you already can go look the band up, but just, wow, this is their lives and this is who they are. And this actually is where they come from. And this thing, at the end when his name comes up as a film by Tom Berenger, <gasps> or, or, uh, uh, Beninger, uh, Beninger. It, you suddenly go, oh my God, you win. You, he did it. You did it. He did it. You, like I'm, in my head, I was like, I didn't realize if he. I, I was like, no, it's about him making the movie. He didn't make the movie. Can't <sighs> be. This is. There's no he way. He made this it. Is, yeah. And it but was the thing, so good. Right. And then the thing that makes it is it's about the national and, and that 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 and their, then it's their about like, like the sound of it. It's about there's like layers to what this is, yeah. but mostly it the 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 driving for the impetus. Yes. For the the driving force behind this film was tom's honest desire to f sort out to sift through yes his relationship with his brother yes and i won't tell you the scene in the backyard because it's it, it sets up one of the most beautiful moments in the movie t for oh me, my god which is the climax and i really feel like you should you should actually experience it yourself yeah. so um, um, I loved this movie so much. I, I want to marry this movie. I love it too. We both want to marry it. it. We both want to marry it. And, um, um, and, and I, we didn't know that so when we big. walked into this room today, I feel like we could talk about it for another hour. Like I, this movie deserves that. I would get a chalkboard and use this. I would teach <laughs> this. I would teach this movie. This is a movie that we, I would watch again and again and go, I want to just show you human. Cause like the Metallica movie. Mm -hmm. In a bigger, you know, which is probably everyone else's reference point for that kind of like raw personal, like fuck, just yeah, turn the camera out there. on, just go. Yeah, yeah, when you really are truthful, if you tell the truth, mm -hmm. even if it's really shitty, people get a chance to decide. And I'm like, I love you. Yeah. I fucking love you. So yeah, I think you know, it, it, and fucking Stone Roses. If that first record wasn't so goddamn good, yeah, furious. fuck those fuckers. Know, fuck those. Fuck them. Yeah, they're just not. They're they. they yeah. I think, like you said, it was a missed opportunity. And when you see something like this, you realize. But then again, I I don't even know if you can compare you if we should compare them because the the mistaken for strangers this this movie that we are reviewing today was just so special, super special, and like. The, the person who made it, the people who are in it, the music, I mean, the, the, the music was so, I mean, it was all Nationals music, obviously. Yeah. Oh my God, except for Rob Halford's Oh Holy Night, That's which is like awesome. the greatest fucking yes, thing ever. There's a ever. moment in the movie where you were- Oh uh, my God. The and then it was like the end title. It was the end title. He wants to listen to the Rob Halford Christmas album, which says a whole lot also. Yeah, yeah, that and, tells you a lot about him. Yeah, and it's funny because it's called Mistaken for Strangers because they would, they, right? Like you wouldn't, you would think never of them guess as, that they were brothers, even though they're, even though they are really two halves, you know, they're two sides of a coin. And and uh, um, yeah, I mean, if I, the the, I if that wasn't the title, I would be called it the Specter of Me, <laughs> because it's like that thing of like, oh my god, like they're they're both their worst, they're both their poison. You know, you are going to have a lot of processing to do this week. Oh, I recommend shit, that you call your therapist Holy immediately. Fuck. I I feel like you are my therapist. <laughs> um, so and also now you're here's the thing next, and we're, we're going to do this more next time. But you're uh, it'll be too late. You'll have already done your walk. But we should have told people last time, and I'm going to tweet about it that you're thank you doing a walk and um my, the Avon Thirty Nine walk. Yeah, for it's a big deal. Uh, my my best friend died of cancer in. Uh, November of yeah. 20, oh my God. Well, I'm all, 15, 2015. Right. So all of you can still ago. donate. You can still 
go to that yep, particular... Yep, you can go. I walk every year to raise money for breast cancer. Well, yep. really just for people, you know, just to the, in this particular charity, Avon 39, um, a huge per- percentage of their the donations that they receive go towards... Uh, you know, giving women rides from their houses to chemotherapy awesome. to like delivering, you know, boxed yep. meals every day. Like they right. really amazing stuff which that was, improve which, the quality yeah. of life. And then especially, some money goes to it, research. Yeah. Well, the way things are going in the world right now, we, uh, that's stuff we have to take care of on our, on yes, our own. Yes, absolutely. You know, um, absolutely. So, so you can still, um, even though you can still donate, already walk the 39, you can still donate. Yeah. You can still, by the time this airs, I'll have done the walk, but, yeah. um, but yeah. you can still, yeah, um, still donate to my page, yeah. um, at the Avon 39 site. Your page is what? It's K. I don't know. It's on my Twitter. Okay. And I'd like to tell everyone to go to my Twitter. Avon 39 yep. slash K Hanley, something like that. You can email us at rock out with your doc out. At oh yeah. Com. And rock we've got out with some your really good suggestions. And the, there were, we were, there were four that came immediately. And the one about the robot band is we have to do that. We will do that because that and is, we also people should re, should rate and review our podcast. Yes, please. Have people been doing that? Uh, they have been. I've seen a couple. We have enough to have a rating. Now, <gasps> You're kidding? Yeah, how and they've many, all been fantastic. Really? Do we have four stars? Yeah. Five stars? How many yes. stars do you get? We got. We have all. We have the whole five stars. Ooh. Yeah. But that, look if, at us, Greg. Right. With it's, the five fucking stars. I know. Look at us. Right. We've got five. <laughs> We have the five toughness that we need for now. <laughs> but if you don't, but also it's okay if you don't feel that way. And if you have uh, complaints, suggestions, anything, you know, we're open to it. Yep. Um, so and, let us um, know. That's it. So right. from until next time, rock out with your doc out. There you go. All right. Bye. You have to do it running, but you do everything. Leave of sleep, so you swear you just saw a feather.